Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 1st, 2022, current on 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including multiple tropical cyclones ongoing in the East Pacific Basin and new seasonal predictions for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Is it getting worse? Let's go and find out. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that it is pretty quiet across the basin for now. What is That is certainly some good news. Uh, we do have a few tropical waves, but they are getting pretty kept in order right now because we have some pretty dry air uh, that's kind of plaguing the basin. And again, this is typical for August 1st. It's not really something that's super out of the ordinary. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. In the East Pacific Basin, we do have a couple of tropical systems ongoing this morning. First of all, we have Tropical Depression Georgette. This is a tropical depression on its last leg of life and will likely weaken and become a post-tropical cyclone sometime later today or tomorrow. And then we also have Tropical Storm Frank. This was once expected to become a major hurricane, but did suffer, and it is now entering into the cooler waters and is also beginning to enter its final stage in life. Now, this is expected to track towards the northeast over the next couple of days, but this is not expected to impact California at all. Uh, maybe bringing some increased moisture, but this system will be long dissipated by the time it ever gets to that area. And then we have a new tropical disturbance down here with a potential of developing over the next couple of days. This will be moving off towards the west and northwest here and should stay away from coastal Mexico, so nothing to worry about at that point. And for the Atlantic Basin, everything is quiet as well. But this takes us to our next segment. We do have some new seasonal predictions. Of course, this is August 1st. So this is kind of a look at what to expect as we progress over the next couple of weeks because the peak season is pretty much right around the corner. So first of all, my updated forecast numbers. Now, they did come down a little bit. Um, again, we were forecasting about 20 named storms back in July. Uh, that forecast has now dipped to two named storms. So we're down to 18 named storms about six hurricanes and three major hurricanes for the remainder of the season. And we are still forecasting about a 59%, so greater than 50% odds of an above average hurricane season. Now, the normal probabilities have significantly increased uh, because especially given some of the seasonal predictions that we've seen, some of the um, climate models have changed and the overall conditions don't seem as favorable for a super high end season as we were expecting back in June and July. So the normal forecast now calls for about 26% chance, but still only 11% chance. So really less than 15% odds of seeing a below average season. Uh, and now that hyperactive season has dropped down to a 4%, but it is non-zero. So there is still the potential of that as well. So again, that's kind of the numbers for today. And, and of course, Colorado State University will be releasing their forecast on the 4th, so here in just a couple of days. Now, looking at the overall threat areas for the 2022 hurricane season, who's going to be impacted and just how great is that risk? First of all, let's take a look here at the island chain here. So this is the island chain forecast, so the Lesser Antilles and parts of the East Caribbean. Now, what we're looking at here, again, the pink is the very high risk, and this is the same exact forecast, but just a little bit more high detail uh, for specific locations. And of course, then that red is a high risk. So that very high risk is about 95% odds. And then the red is anything that's about roughly about 70 to 90% uh, odds. So again, generally speaking for the Caribbean, all of the island chain, basically, especially the southern island chain, has a very high risk. And even portions of Central, or I'm sorry, portions of South America, the northern coast of South America, does have that risk. And we've already seen tropical cyclone impacts from uh, PTC2, which was then named Bonnie. Um, so that is something to kind of keep in mind um, as we progress throughout the remainder of the season. Of course, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic. Uh, all have a high risk of seeing tropical cyclone impacts. And of course, Jamaica with a very high risk as well to the entire island. So that entails that there's a 95% chance or greater of seeing a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point. This does not say that there will be a major hurricane or anything, but it just goes to show that there's a very high risk in that region. 
Now, if we focus more on the Western Caribbean side, again, so there's Jamaica, there's Cuba right there, and here is Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula. Again, generally speaking, the Yucatan Peninsula as a whole has a very high 95% chance or greater, given some of the steering patterns that we've seen in this year and some of the climate models kind of reiterating that uh, for August and September and, and into October, I think that is a very justifiable risk. And then continuing into portions of the Bay of Campeche, continuing with a high risk there, and even portions of inland South or Central America. And the reason why is generally because if we get some of these uh, lower latitude systems, they barrel into Central America. And so there is an, an enhanced risk for seeing some impacts there. So there is at least a 90, a, between a 70 and 90% chance of seeing impacts to that area in the inland portions. For the Gulf of Mexico states and basically Florida as well, again, that risk continues. A very high probability here into South and Central Florida. So that's a greater than 95% odds and, of course, 70 to 90% chance across the rest of the entire Gulf of Mexico. And this is not necessarily to be taken 100% for Adam. Of course, your risk is going to depend greatly on your area and steering patterns for an individual storm. But overall, the steering patterns favor Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico systems this year. And then continuing up the eastern seaboard, again, we still have a pretty high risk of seeing some tropical cyclone impacts, especially to portions of Georgia and South Carolina, then those taper off to be a moderate risk, so uh, between 40 and 60% chance, and then a low risk, so between really about 10 or really anywhere from about zero to um, about 30% across portions of the Northeast US. Um, so that kind of is your specific risk area. Now, again, that's going to determine greatly on the storm because each storm is going to have a different trajectory, different steering patterns. But overall, the pattern does not necessarily favor significant northeast systems this year, but will mainly be focused down across the deep south and the Gulf of Mexico and then into the Caribbean. And lastly, for the Bahamas, again, continuing with that pretty high, there is a high risk there across most of the Bahamas, especially the westernmost islands with between a, again, 40 and 60% chance of seeing a tropical storm within 25 miles of a given point for the easternmost islands as well. Now, focusing on the model forecasts over the next couple of weeks, let's look at the GFS forecast. This is the precipitable water. This is looking uh, really at the relative humidity and, and all these different factors. It's just basically showing, do we have more moisture or less moisture in the atmosphere this is the 60 run, so we'll kind of bring this up to about current time now. Now, here's kind of what to watch over the next couple of, of weeks. So right now, we've had some pretty dry air plaguing the Atlantic, and that is because of this high pressure out here, basically just sending all this dry air through wave-breaking patterns in across the deep tropics. And this has certainly, you know, flooded the entire Atlantic with this dry, stable air and it's very hard to get tropical cyclone development out of there. So we notice that on the GFS forecast, this pattern doesn't really reverse for any extended period of time. And you keep getting this dry air to be fed uh, from really the Canary Current and up near Europe all the way down south here into the MDR. And this is a big problem because this obviously does not allow for tropical cyclones to develop. Now... The GFS has certainly had its fair share of problems, but if we look at the European forecast, again, this is the 0 z euro, and we notice that you have somewhat of a similar pattern because we notice that we do get occasional dry air bursts into the Atlantic, and most notably across the North Atlantic, and really your deeper moisture plume is focused along the intertropical convergence zone. So it's pretty hard to get tropical cyclones. Along with that, though, there is actually some increased uh, shear. You can kind of tell that some of the shear patterns in here, there's definitely this upper trough here that's kind of digging in. And so there's a little bit more shear in the atmosphere. And that's one of the reasons why, again, kind of the numbers game have been significant, or not significantly, but definitely dialed down a bit because there is some uncertainty to how far this is going to go 
Now, if we do look here at the 500 heights here, again, generally speaking, we will expect a pretty strong ridge out there. And if we actually look at the ensemble mean sea level pressure, though, on the euro, there is certainly some signs of life for potential tropical development out by August 16th. There is a couple of waves in the MDR. Now, of course, this is very long range, but it is a sign that the tropics are beginning to kind of heat up. And if we actually look at how the GFS fares to that, again, the GFS is also kind of depicting a couple of potential systems in the MDR. So both models are kind of coming around to the idea of the tropics beginning to kind of wake up after August 20th. It's going to kind of be one of those later going seasons, later starting seasons, which isn't necessarily a bad thing in, in La Nina years. You know, you can have, you know, activity well into the month of October and November. So it's not certainly something to kind of, you know, say, oh, you know, 2013 or whatever. But certainly if we don't start to see the models begin to flip by about August 30th, I'm going to start to have to really lower those numbers down even further so we'll kind of be watching how that progresses over the next couple of weeks. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.